How are you enjoying the tasting so far? Have you enjoyed the wines? How have you scored them? Have you, have you scored them similar to me? A little bit different, I'd be, be really interested to know. Uh, I, I've got to tell you, I've been really, really looking forward uh, to tasting this, this Brunello from San Polo. I've tasted the wines from San Polo before. Um, yeah, re really, really top top Sangiovese, the grape uh, we know from Chianti there. Uh, but yeah, but also in Brunello is where they use Sangiovese. Um, this is a reserva wine. So in Brunello, if you have the word re reserva on the wine, this means you have to have aged it for a minimum of two years in oak and four years in the bottle before you release the wine, which is what they've done here. So as you can imagine, this is an expensive process, but it adds a lot of depth and complexity to the wine. From the Sangiovese grape, um, what we probably normally expect to see is the acidity levels up again, the tannin levels are up again, but the fruit character is really cherries, a really classic cherries flavor. And sometimes uh, we'll be looking at licorice uh, as the sort of savory note here, but there'll certainly be a balance between sweet uh, fruit flavors and savory flavors. Uh, 2010, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, really cracking, cracking top vintage um, for Brunello. So let's give it a go. I mean, I'm already getting some of that licorice flavor on the nose. It really, really stands out on the nose. You might see I poured myself a little bit extra for the Brunello here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really, really good wine. I mean, you have to just take a moment to pause, I think, when you try this wine, you'll do the same thing because the, the length of the flavor is what stands out. I mean, I'm still tasting this wine almost to 100% right now. Um, this, this really has got exceptional uh, length and finish. So tannins, yeah, the tannins are right up there. It's, it's really big. I mean, this is an incredibly age-worthy wine because so we've got that wonderful freshness in the back, that sort of Morello cherry uh, acidity, which runs alongside the wine and the huge but soft tannins as well. Uh, we sometimes describe these as well-integrated tannins. That means they're big, but they're soft, so they don't seem too aggressive, uh, which they can do in their youth. It's a wine that's it's drinking superbly well now, it really is. Um, I, I, I mean, I'd score this wine up at 8.5. It really is um, an ex exceptional wine. I'm very, very happy with that. The cheese I picked um, to, to go alongside this is, um, yeah, it's one of my favorite cheeses actually. My brother introduced it to me called Montagnola Fini and it's, um, it's from Bavaria in Germany and it's a, a blue, uh, but a brie style of blue. Um, yeah, really delicious. I think the text is here and the acidity and the, 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 the edge from the blue is gonna go nicely here. What I would say is, of course, get your cheese up to, to room temperature beforehand because that's, that's in perfect condition right now. Okay, delicious cheese, delicious wine. They don't go together nicely. Here, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a fantastic pairing. When you've got such a stunning wine, you, you wouldn't want to spoil it. So maybe go and drink your San Polo 2010 Brunello on its own. Um, the pairing here, less than 50%. I'm not going to score that one.